computer. So, amen. So, everyone, welcome. This is Wednesday Night Bible Study, 6 p.m. California time to 8 p.m. Um, we are studying Luke 16, 19 to 31. Um, that would be the rich man and Lazarus. These parables are being recorded uh, to benefit others and to edify others and sharpen ourselves too. We could watch them again, get some more revelation. Um, any information on us will be in the con into in the description of this video. How to contact us? How to get a hold of us um, through uh, the ministries that we work with. And we just love you all for watching. And thank you, Lord, for being here, for your glory. Uh, help us understand your holy word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So does anybody want to start off reading? I know that Sister Carolyn has a, a King James. Um, anybody else want to start off reading too? I, I, can, I can read if you want me to, Rich. Yeah, and uh, just go ahead. Um, 19 to 31. If you feel like you want to read uh, any more, if you think it's necessary, you're welcome. Okay. All right. Well, this is, we're talking about the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And just to kind of get everybody up to speed, um, it says in my commentary in my study Bible that this Lazarus is just merely a character in this story, and we should not confuse him with the Lazarus uh, that Jesus raised from the dead. And I didn't know that until I read it here, so I just thought I would share that with everybody. All righty, we're going to start with uh, verse 19. It said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus, in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence then he said i pray thee therefore father that thou wouldest send him to my father's house for I have five brethren, that he may testify <clears throat> excuse me, unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. That's the end of chapter, verse 31. Amen. Brother Reggie, I've got the revised, uh, revised standard version. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> thanks, Trace. Just get a good understanding of the word. Yeah, go ahead, read it. You said all right? Okay. Yes. 
I just found it today. It's my, actually my father-in-law's Bible. It's the layman's parable Bible. So it's got four versions in one. <laughs> awesome. So, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who fasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, whose desire to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels of Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And, he, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus to, Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you are in your lifetime received you received your good things and and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he's he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this between us and you a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us and he said then I beg you father to send him to my father's house for I have five brothers so that he may warn them lest they also come into the place of torment but Abraham said they have Moses the prophets let them hear, hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone, someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if some, someone should rise from the dead. Wow. Amen. Car Caroline, did you want to read your version? And then anybody after Caroline want to read King James? Then we'll go verse to verse. And see what, what Reggie, when I read a minute ago, I read King James. I didn't read. Oh, I thought you were reading NLT. No, I, I, I have them both laying here, and I just started reading the other oh, one. Man. <laughs> yeah. I can read it in the NLT if you want, or somebody else or whatever. Uh, Sister Caroline, did you want to read your version, Sister? Okay, praise the Lord. What about Chris? Chris has an awesome version. I like it. Put you on the spot, Chris. If you're not ready yet, it's okay. Just let me know. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want me to go ahead and do the NLT right now while they're getting ready or whatever? Uh, no, I'll go with the Amplified. I'll do the Amplified. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm just sharing something real quick. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So we understand a little bit what's going on here, right? I got some commentary I wanted to read. It talks about the, the hell. Um, and then I want to go through just verse for verse. And if anybody has any revelation, any words of knowledge, any insight, is the Lord speaking to you on anything, please share. Please share, because every one of your gifts are valuable in these meetings. Every one of your, um, call it talents, there you go, talents are valuable to me in these meetings, amen? But I'll read this commentary. Um, it's from a new believer's commentary. It says, what is hell like? And it says, read Luke 16, 19, 31. It says, Jesus reveals some information about hell in this parable. Uh, people's lifestyles on earth will not be uh, the same in eternity. Things dramatically change for the rich man when he passed into eternity. Um, 
Because he did not know God, he immediately entered into the dark torment of hell, penniless and in, and in agony. Though those whose hearts are not right with God face the same future as the rich man in the story. After death, it is possible that they will be held in hell until they are brought before the Lord God at what is called the great white throne judgment, though no one really knows for sure. Why would a good God see anyone in hell? And it is telling us to read another, another commentary. And it says, hell is a place of flames and torment. The rich man in this parable experiencing unrelenting heat and an unquenchable thirst. He was in so much agony that he, agony that he called out to Abraham to have Lazarus come dip his finger in water to cool his, the rich man's tongue. If you have ever been badly burned, then you will have an idea of the torment an eternity in hell will bring. Add to the darkness and isolation, and you will have an incredible bleak scenario. <coughs> people do not have a good time in hell. Some people say, I want to go to hell. All of my friends will be there. That may be true, but there's no party. As this parable states, the rich man is so alarmed by the situation that he wants Lazarus to go and warn his brothers so that they will not join him in torment. If you want to know about the reality of hell, you don't need to tabloid accounts of near-death experiences. Study the words of the living God who died and rose again, and you can, and who can tell you exactly what to expect in eternity. Our acceptance of, or rejection of his words determines where we will spend the rest of our lives. So that's a commentary for that. Amen. So in this one, we start at 19. Anybody have anything to add anywhere at all? I'm going to read from the Amplified in 19. It says, uh, there was a certain rich man who habitually cloaked clothed himself in purple and fine linen and reveal and re, and re, what's it called revealed and feast reveled reveled and feasted and made merry in splendor every day okay so we can get from that that he was a rich man right we know purple is some of that expensive stuff right back in those days and only the rich had that um, so he was a rich man okay so he, he ate, uh, even the King James says, there is a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day, okay? So he, he, he feasted, he, he ate well, he, um, he lived a good life, right? Every day, there wasn't a day that he didn't have all the riches and the, and the things that come with that, right? Um, and then in 20, it says, and at his gate there was carelessly dropped down and left a certain utterly destitute man named Lazarus, reduced to begging alms and covered with ulcered sores. And then and, and King James, it says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. It's kind of interesting to me. And please speak if you have any insight that he was laid at the gate, like, like he didn't go there. Someone laid him there, right? Does it sound like that? Like someone laid him there? You know, like he was near death, full of sores. Um, unless he was able to get there himself. But that's pretty interesting. So he was at his gate. So I want you to imagine, this is what I was getting from studying this. This, this poor, sick man at the gate it's very important we picture that um because we know in here what we read it doesn't seem like he did anything for lazarus right it doesn't seem like he did anything for him and he had riches to do something um so in 21 it says he eagerly desired to be satisfied with with what fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs even came and licked his sores. Anybody want to add anything? 
Anything at all? I, I want to say something. This whole thing of the dogs even came and licked his sores. Now, I don't know about dogs, but I remember being a kid. And I would tell my dad sometimes, Dad, I got a cut and it's not going away. And we had dogs. And he would say, I'll let the dog lick it. It'll heal. Have you ever heard that? I, I've heard that. And I used to do it all the time. And they used to heal. So I don't know if the dogs have some type of healing properties on their tongues or anything. I don't know. But they're always licking sores and stuff, and it heals, right? Go ahead, Charlotte. I'm glad you got your hand up. I was hoping somebody would say something on this. Uh, yes, I had a, uh, I don't know if she was a foster sister or, or uh, what, but her name was Mary, and she was cooking on a, a crock pot, and it, not a crock pot, but a, a pressure cooker on the stove, and it blew up. And it knocked her out and her burned her face. And her dog was licking her face. So by the time the people got there and, you know, she was rescued, it, her face did not scar from those burns where that dog was licking her in her face until the uh, medics got there to her. Thank you for sharing that. You see, I was kind of a, like, like, should I even bring this up? But when I read that, it reminded me of being a kid and me putting my hand by the dog's mouth and say, lick it. Dad said, lick it, you know, and lick my wound, you know, and I was always getting cut, all scratched up. And so it would heal. So that's what I was raised on. Okay. I don't know if it was an old fairy tale or whatever. I don't know. But that's what happened in my, in my childhood. So if the dogs lick the wounds and it heals, they always lick their own wounds. I know that and it heals. Um, it just amazes me that this guy had sores and even the dogs tended to him. The dogs. The dogs went. A, Go ahead. I have a commentary here which uh, talks about that. So I'll start like one sentence before it says um, Okay, the gate of the rich man's house is always closed to the poor man who lies outside it, seeking to eat the leftovers from the rich man's table. The rich man is dressed in fine clothes while Lazarus is covered with sores. The rich man feasts sumptuously every day while Lazarus starves. Only the dogs, this goes back to what you were just talking about, and only the dogs take care of him. That's interesting. So this commentary says the dogs are helping him out. And they come to lick his wounds. The scene recalls the harsh reprimand of the Son of Man at the Last Judgment. I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was naked, you did not clothe me. Lazarus is a good example of the silent cry of the poor throughout the ages and the contradictions of a world in which immense wealth and resources are in the hands of a few. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. So, well, you know, my my take really on it is, man, the rich man didn't go to hell because he was rich. The rich man went to hell because he was greedy and he didn't help him. He didn't feed him. You know, um, you know, and the Bible says the love of money, not money, is the root of all evil. But, yeah, um, because back in that day, the Pharisees, considered your wealth is how righteous you were isn't that crazy they thought if you were rich then you were righteous you know but yeah he uh he didn't help him he was laying there just begging for scraps and he didn't give him anything you know yeah yes absolutely um, no compassion at all from right him. and you know that's what that's what we're called to do is, you know, have love and compassion. But the the low the lowest of lowest, the dogs had compassion for him. Yes, that blew me away. That blew me. The, the dogs were tending to him like the like the good Samaritan. You know what yeah. I mean? They were doing that. And they were they were the, the, the animals, the the pets, you know, um yeah, the dogs. And they they knew that this man needed some love. But the guy who, who owned the gate, who owned the property. He didn't see that. So I just wanted to share that with you. It kind of, kind of blew me away. Um, uh, we can uh, read further. Uh, any other 
things on that. In the 22, it says, and it occurred that the man reduced to begging, okay, he reduced to begging, died, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so Abraham's bosom, I heard it explained quite a few times today in the past week. Um, they're saying like that would be considered as like paradise. The best way I heard it, as paradise, close to, you know, close to you, safe, paradise. So any other input in that? Anybody have any input on that? Charlie, did you raise your hand again, Charlie? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to tell you what this particular scripture means to me. Uh, I actually, this is one of my favorites. Um, basically, it tells me that if we are in Christ, when we pass away, we are going to be escorted into Abraham's bosom. And if we're not, we're going to to die alone and then we're going to open our eyes and we're going to find ourselves in a really bad place and god is so good he is just so good to have two angels escort us into heaven because it says that two angels escorted lazarus into abraham's bosom but the rich man who cared not for his feather fellow man just went to sleep opened his eyes up and found himself lost yep he was he was buried yeah that's good i'm glad you pointed out the angels i was about to bring that up the angels um, carried him to abraham's bosom um so that's another thing right there about the angels they're going to be doing some work when it's when that time comes right so and we're going to end up getting the chance and the opportunity to judge them. How awesome, how awesome is that? Glory to God. Then it says, and the rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so he's buried. This is like what happens down here, right? And in Hades, and in Hades, the realm of the dead, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. So let me see where it's at, 23. I'm going to just go over real quick, King James. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He was torment. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So basically, he was in hell, right? And it was horrible. It wasn't a fun place at all. There was no um, feast. There was no purple linen. There's no purple down there, right? No purple clothes. There was not even a gate for him um, to go in and out of. There was none of that. Um, so that goes to show, like, like uh, you know, we, we really better make sure we walk in the ways of the Lord. I know that. Um, and in 24, and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have pity and mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in flame. There it is right there. He's in anguish in the flames. Right? And there's a there's a lot more talk of hell in the word of God. Um, they're bringing up um, scriptures on some things I watched today uh, in in, a, in some uh, revelation and other areas of the Bible. I didn't write them down, but we know it's there. We, we all we all read the Bible, um, and I just think that's just uh, awesome. I think this video is going to really touch some people because um, when, a lot of people don't like to talk about hell. They like to leave that out. They like to. A lot of people don't even like to believe it exists anymore. The carnal mind is really taking a toll. Um, on on the believers today that were they're not even believing in hell this and 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 the Lord because this is red letters the Lord is bringing it he's bringing it he he brings up about hell he talks about hell amen amen so let me see twenty five uh, so I'm in anguish in this flame it says twenty five but Abraham said child remember that you in your lifetime fully received what is due in 
what is due you in comforts and delights and Lazarus in like manner of the discomforts and distresses. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. So let's think about that for a second. So we know that Lazarus, it wasn't fun for him, right? He was not in comfort. Now, now, he was not in comfort. It, it, it was not. It was not easy for him. He was. Um, he was not. He didn't have purple, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so we have to understand too that a lot of us who are going to heaven, we're going to be not in comfort either. You know, I'm not saying we're going to be at someone's gate. We might, but it shows you that that discomfort sometimes leads to heaven. You know, um, it's not going to be comfortable. So I just thought that was amazing right there. Because um, a lot of people don't see it that way. You know, when, when I look and I see the, the brothers and sisters and, and the streets, they are in discomfort. And I know that many of them are going to make it to heaven. I know they are. You know, many of them not, but many of them will. Brother Reggie, what's so sad about that is it says he can see across the gulf. He can see while he's there in the pit. He can see across the gulf. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, also, too, imagine the state, okay, like we're talking about the story, but imagine the state of the beggar before he died. He probably didn't feel he was going to heaven. He probably felt he was forgotten. He probably felt like he was left behind. You know what I mean? Like, like he wasn't feeling what we're knowing what happened. He didn't know this was going to happen. I don't know. I don't, we don't know this, but if you're in a tormented life, if you're full of sores and living at someone's gate, you know, begging, looking for crumbs on the table, from the table, you're, you're probably not feeling like you're loved by God. And then look what happens. So let's, let's, let's take note of that. There's going to be times that we're going to not feel like that. You know, I got a call from someone today that they felt like that. I feel like I'm so far from the Lord. So I'm like, all right, boom, call them up right now. Pray for them. I just got a text right now saying, thank you for your prayer. There was a shift. There was a change. But someone feels like that in 2019, like they're far from the Lord. Imagine how he felt. So keep note of that. There's going to be times where you feel like that beggar alone. That doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. You know? Amen? You know, something else, Reggie, I just want to throw this in, is, you know, as we're going through our days, um, as we go through life and, and we see people that are, you know, suffering or maybe don't have, um, you, you need to keep it in the back of your mind at all times that that could be an angel. That could be an angel standing there just going to see how you react. Um, you, you just never know. It says an angel could be anywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we need to act with compassion toward everybody. Can I say something? Yes. I just want to say something. You, you, you know, and, I, and I'm going to be up front here. And, and we need to think about this. We don't really know what suffering is. We really don't. We got a house. You know, we're not homeless. We're not out there trying to look for food or trying to find a meal for our day. We don't know what that's like. We complain too much about, oh, we're suffering this, we're suffering that. Until you get to that point where you don't have a home, you don't know where your next meal is. You even don't even know where you're going to sleep at. We should not even complain. You know that? We should be thankful. Amen. Because we don't, because we're not there where they're at. And we should be showing them that compassion, Shet, just like you say. Because it seems that, you know what, it looked like we arrived, but we didn't. Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, whose faith is greater, theirs and ours, because they're living a day by day, how they're going to get by. We, we're just doing the norm, bro. But I just wanted to share that with you. And you know what? That's one thing about Lazarus. He lived it day by day and he suffered. So how dare us say that we're going through things when in all reality, we got it okay. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. But it's the truth. Well, a lot of us may have been homeless too. I have. I've been homeless most of my 20s. Um, I was there. I've been there, been there a lot. I've been in a lot of food lines. Um, but uh, me too. But I want you to understand too that he, his state of mind. I know we see people who have homes. We see people, and I think I just explained it, that they sometimes feel like La like Lazarus, and that doesn't mean you're forgotten. Because right here, Abraham says, Lazarus in like manner the discomforts and distresses, but now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. So yeah, praise the Lord. Um, thank you for this revelation, Lord. Let's go to 26. And besides all this, <coughs> between us and you <coughs> and great Chism has been fixed in order that those who want to pass from this place to you may not be able and no one may pass from there to us you know uh, uh, let me see what does it say in the King James what was that 26 and besides all this between us and you there is a great a gulf fix okay that's how I heard it before so that they which would pass from hence to cannot Neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. So we're saying um, there's a gulf. There's a space between where Lazarus is now and where the rich man is. There's no way. There's no passing. No, he couldn't even give you a little bit of water. He couldn't give you a cup if you wanted to because that's it. What's done is done. There's a separation. Uh, eternal hell and eternal um, uh, life in heaven. You know what I mean? So that, that's impossible. So that's good right there to know, too. Um, once you're there, you're there. You know, once you're in heaven, you're in heaven. You know, so that's good to know. Any other input on this? Anything? Any commentaries? Please read. I believe a lot of people will be blessed by this uh, information we're sharing and the word study we're doing. Um, I have, I have one here that just backs up a little bit, and it just, again, another wordplay, another commentary. You know, I don't think we can do enough. It says, to ignore a poor man is to scorn God. So, uh, scorn, which is a word, you know, I don't use every day. Scorn, the definition is the feeling or belief that someone or something is just worthless. Just, oh, wow. So that guy rode in with his purple on, looked at that Lazarus, Lazarus, and just, just like, oh, come on, man. I, you know, can my horse just probably step on him? You know? You so know. it says, to ignore a poor man is to scorn God. We must learn this well. To ignore the poor is to scorn God. There is a detail in the parable that is worth noting. The rich man has no name, but only an adjective, the rich man. While the name of the poor man is repeated five times. And Lazarus means God helps. Lazarus, who is lying at the gate, is a living reminder to the rich man to remember God. But the rich man does not receive that reminder. Hence, he will be condemned not because of his wealth, which has nothing to do with it, but for being incapable of feeling compassion for Lazarus and for not coming to his aid. So the last sentence is there. Hence, 
He, the rich man, will be condemned not because of his wealth, but for being incapable of feeling compassion for Lazarus and not coming to his aid. Wow. Amen. Yeah, because he scorned God because, the, you know, the, Bible, the, the word of God says that when we do that to the least, we're doing it to Jesus. So he scorned God. God because he ignored Jesus laying at his gate basically so um yeah that's good right there also too this also kind of goes along with what we've been learning on these parables is if you would really know God you would know the love of God and you would not pass by brothers and sisters I can go by my house every day and I can tell if there's a weed coming up on my sidewalk I noticed that much less a human being with sores Man, how can you ignore that if you have the means, you know? I don't, I, I'm very, um, Lord, I, I don't have money, but um, I'll do whatever thing I can um, to, to help uh, people because it's the love of God in me. Man, I can't even hardly watch a television show without feeling the love of God, you know? So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we have that love, that agape love that we would not pass up somebody in that situation. Anybody else have anything to add before we hit 27? I just uh, but, I read what Sister Neil D shared with us in chat. Matthew 25, 31 to 40. It's very relevant. And I'm still like, I wanted to cry when I read that. Yes, that's that's what I yeah, I'm glad you put that there. I, I didn't notice it. Um but that's uh I think that's before the goats, ain't it? Yeah, that's before the goats. That's the next coming parable. So yeah, I mean he, he ignored Jesus right there. Amen. Brother Reggie, I don't I honestly don't. I think the reason why is you, you end up in that dark place. You end up in that bad place and you don't end up in heaven and you don't end up with Abraham is because I don't think if you've got the love of Christ inside of you and you've got that agape love inside of you, I don't think that it's possible to walk past somebody like that, you know, with, without reaching out to them. And I think that's the reason they end up there because I don't think you can possibly have the love of God inside of you or love God and, and, and walk by something like that. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God's love. It, it's amazing. And when we have that and we start to grow in that, oh, man. Amen. Anyone else before we go 27? Yeah, I, was, I just wanted to comment that it's interesting that actually since uh, Lazarus was laying there next to the rich man's gate, uh, who's actually his neighbor? And one of the second commandments is to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's and that was just... <laughs> Amen. That's right. Yeah. Ignored his neighbor, man. That's good. <laughs> Uh, and and it actually connects with us today because often um, near here near our, our neighbors here, neighborhoods here, um, I'm a, you know there's many corners where there's people standing, you know, um, asking for money, and uh, essentially they're our neighbors as well. Yeah. And so it's something to think about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's going to be people that love this. Thank you, Jesus. Um, amen. We'll just go a step into 27. 27. And the man said then, Father. Okay, so he knows he can't, there's, he can't get no help, right, from them. So then he says, and the man said, Father, I beseech you to send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers so that, the 28. For I have five brothers so that he may give solemn testimony and warn them, lest they too come into the place of torment. So let's check this out. What I'm getting there is, okay, he realizes now 
when it's too late. That because he ignored and didn't have compassion on the beggar at his gate, he realizes now in hell, in torment, that's why he's here. He knows he did not live a repented life, a life pleasing to the Lord. He did not show love and compassion. So he's here. But it's too late. It's too late. So this is good for us right here so that we understand it, that we're alive right now. So let's not be in that situation where we're going to realize in hell when it's too late. So he realizes, right? So now he's saying, can you go to my brothers? And he's saying, can you let, um, um, he says, send Lazarus, right? Let me see here. Uh, man, Father, I beseech you to send him. Okay, send Lazarus to my father's house for I have five brothers so that they may give solemn testimony and warn them. These they come into this place of torment. So also that's good for testimony. So he's saying right there that testimony, a true testimony of Lazarus coming and talking to them. They knew that guy was a beggar. The, the brothers probably knew him, dude. They was at the, at, the, at the gate too. So this testimony can change his brother. So that's good for us because we know the testimony is powerful. That shows right there that he even knew that testimony is powerful. So I like that. And so uh, what did Abraham say? Anybody else have anything on that? Did they see something I don't see there? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to comment on that, what, what he said, you know, to pray. Hey, just because we don't have gold or silver, you know, money to give someone, hey, we could stop and spend a minute with them, bless them, pray for them. And, you know, like, like in, you know, in the Bible, uh, when they were, uh, I can't remember what scripture it is, but, you know, uh, they were like, hey, silver and gold, we have none, but what we do have, we'll surely share with you. And that's the Holy Ghost, you know, and they pray for them. So, yeah, that's just, that's just as good as, as money for a lot of people is just to stop and say hello, to pray for them. Um, that's, that's awesome. And, and for me, most importantly, is when I tell people, you know, Jesus loves you, or God bless you, yep. um, their eyes light up, and they, it's like the world is starving for that. I've approached people and had them actually start crying when I say, hey, can I pray for you? And, and they were like, you would actually stop and want to pray for me? It just blows their mind, you know. <clears throat> hey, I was going to—I was going to add something else, just real quick. <clears throat> that all of this story from 19 all the way to 31 it was all spoken out of the mouth of Jesus. This is all red letters. Amen. That's right. Um, what did I just read? 28. So I'm going to read 28 and, and the King James. For I have five brothers that they may testify, that he may testify unto them. At least they also come into the place of torment. Okay, so he didn't want his, he realized what he did wrong. Um, many people are going to realize after it's too late, so we know that. And 29, it says, but Abraham, and, and amplified, but Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear and listen to them. But he answered, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent, change their minds for the better, and heartily amend their ways with adherence of their past sins. And then in 31, it says, he said to them, if they do not hear and listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded and convinced and believe, even if someone should rise from the dead. Pretty powerful right there, Jesus saying that. A lot of people ain't going to believe even when someone rises from the dead like him. Yeah. And uh, and that's true. You know, now's the time to believe. Um, and and th this is, what is this right here? Our Bible. Our Bible right here. This is it. This is the prophets are in here. The, the word of God is, is so wonderful and so beautiful. And we can't believe this. You know? And then, and then also, too, I heard someone say today, 
and knowing the Bible, he waved it up. He goes, knowing the Bible, studying it don't mean nothing if you don't apply it. That's right. And so we got to apply it, what we learn, what we learn here today. Amen. You know? Anything else anyone want to say on this? I think it's a really beautiful um, parable or not parable. <laughs> a story or a parable. <laughs> So we uh, there was a lot of people that had mixed mixed things on that. It's a tr it's a story. It's a true story or a story or they don't believe it's a parable because of the name. But praise the Lord! All because you want to be laid up on. Amen, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so yeah, guys. Anything else? We'll just cut this video. I think we covered it. Um, let's not, uh, let's not forget who we are in Christ. Let's not forget why we are in Christ. Um, what Jesus did, because sometimes we have to stop what we're doing, take a moment and just remember why we're Christians. You know, what did Jesus do? What could God do? Send his only son. Cause if we can keep that and not, not forget or not let the carnal mind twist these thoughts that sometimes the devil likes to do to where we even for one second stop believing that he's coming because according to this he's coming you know and uh amen let's keep keep focus and be be the bride that we're supposed to be talk about the bridegroom as often as we can share the gospel and help those who are in need amen there's always some. You can have a penny in your pocket. And there's somebody who doesn't have a penny. So, man. Want to end it? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this uh, Bible study, this uh, parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Father God, we just love you. We pray that we did this for your glory. We pray that we, we edified somebody, sharpened somebody, Lord. And we thank you for the technology to do this, to share this. We bless those who watch this. We bless those who are here. And we bless you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jesus.